2025 is a great year for lunar exploration. Thanks to a partnership between SpaceX and NASA, lunar landers are taking turns riding SpaceX rockets on their exploration missions. Notable among them is Firefly's Blue Ghost, which has just hit the highway heading straight for the moon, paving the way for subsequent missions. In today's episode, let's follow the trail of these artificial explorers and discover their voyages to the moon. Blue Ghost has officially left Earth's orbit. Since launching into orbit aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 a month ago, on February 8th, Blue Ghost successfully performed a trans-lunar injection burn to escape Earth's gravitational pull and begin a four-day transit to the Moon's orbit. Firefly shares on X with joy. Blue Ghost has merged onto the highway to the Moon. After a successful trans-lunar injection burn, our lander has left Earth's orbit and begun its four-day transit to the Moon's orbit. We'll then spend approximately 16 days in lunar orbit before we begin Blue Ghost's descent. This gives us plenty of time to calibrate our navigation system and continue payload science operations for NASA's Blue Ghost Mission 1. Before leaving, the spacecraft captured a final image of Earth. As it was set to operate on the Moon until its batteries ran out, this moment also marked Blue Ghost's last interaction with its home planet. Australia can be seen in the photo. After the translunar injection, Blue Ghost executed a precise trajectory correction maneuver to ensure it remained on course during its journey to the moon. So far, Blue Ghost has successfully conducted dozens of health tests, generating an impressive 13 gigabytes of data. All 10 NASA payloads aboard are in optimal condition and fully prepared for surface operations on the moon. One of these payloads is NASA's Radiation Tolerant Computer, developed by Montana State University. It successfully operated while traversing Earth's Van Allen radiation belts, offering valuable insights into how to mitigate radiation effects on computers. This advancement enhances our understanding of the radiation environment that future astronauts may face during Artemis missions. In another milestone, NASA's Lunar Magnetotelluric Sounder, LMS, developed by the Southwest Research Institute, accurately detected a shift in magnetic fields during an on-orbit health check. This promising result indicates that LMS will be capable of measuring the Moon's magnetic and electrical fields, providing crucial information about the Moon's interior temperature and composition. During another health check, Firefly and NASA teams successfully captured data and an interior image of the sample container from NASA's Lunar Planet VAC, LPV. This confirms that the payload is fully operational ahead of its surface operations on the Moon. The LPV is a technology demonstration designed to efficiently collect and transfer lunar soil from the surface to other science instruments or sample return containers without relying on gravity. The Firefly's Blue Ghost Lander features a robust, box-shaped structural framework supported by four sturdy landing legs. It is equipped with two decks designed for versatile equipment mounting, offering a total payload capacity of 155 kilograms. Power is supplied by solar panels, which can either be mounted along the spacecraft's sides or deployed to extend above the top deck, allowing for optimal positioning relative to the sun. The solar arrays generate 450 watts of nominal power with a peak output of 650 watts. Thermal regulation is achieved through a combination of heat pipes, radiators, multi-layer insulation, and active heaters. Surface communications provide an average downlink speed of 6 megabits per second, with a peak of 10 megabits per second, while uplink speeds average 0.2 kilobits per second, reaching a peak of 2 kilobits per second. This design has proven highly effective so much so that Blue Ghost was able to skip the third Earth orbit maneuver during the translunar injection. For this reason, NASA trusted it with two more missions to return to the Moon in 2026 and 2028. Blue Ghost Mission 2 in 2026 employs a two-stage spacecraft configuration with Firefly's Blue Ghost lunar lander stacked atop the Elytra Dark Orbital Vehicle. The Elytra vehicle will first deploy Blue Ghost 
and the European Space Agency's Lunar Pathfinder satellite into lunar orbit. Following deployment, Blue Ghost will land on the far side of the moon, where it will operate both government and commercial payloads for over 10 days on the lunar surface. The moon's far side is an ideal destination due to its exceptional, quiet environment, free from Earth's radio frequency interference. This unique isolation provides an optimal setting for scientific exploration. Additionally, during the lunar night, the moon effectively shields against solar noise, creating the perfect conditions to collect critical data on the cosmic dark ages. Then, two years after that, Blue Ghost will once again return to the Moon along with a Lytra Dark Orbital Vehicle and a rover for the Blue Ghost Mission 3. The landing site for this mission is the Grutizen Domes, an intriguing region of ancient lava flows located near Sinus Viscositatis on the Moon's near side. Shrouded in geological mystery, the domes are believed to consist of silica-rich volcanic minerals, which may point to the presence of lunar water and hydrogen. Blue Ghost Mission 3 will be the first to land in the Grutuizen Domes, providing a unique opportunity to explore the distinctive composition of the Gamma Dome. During mission operations, Elytra will first deploy Blue Ghost into lunar orbit, where it will stay to provide continuous long-haul communications. Blue Ghost will then land in the Grutuizen Domes, release the rover, and operate six NASA-sponsored payloads for over 14 days on the lunar surface. These payloads will investigate the Gamma Dome's unique formation and composition, contributing valuable insights that will guide future robotic and human exploration on the Moon. Additionally, the mission will enhance our understanding of Earth's history and the broader solar system. Speaking of lunar vehicles, did you know the VIPER project is back? That's right, one of the biggest regrets of last year, Viper has risen from the ashes. Viper, which stands for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, was a robotic mission designed to land near the moon's south pole and spend 100 days searching for lunar ice deposits. The mission was canceled last year due to escalating costs, but it looks like it will come back. Recently, NASA has published an announcement for partnership proposals, inviting proposals from parties interested in partnering with NASA to obtain science data with NASA's Viper by landing it on the moon, operating it, and sharing the scientific results. Under the terms of the agreement, NASA will provide the existing VIPER rover in its current form. Potential partners will be responsible for integrating the rover, ensuring its successful landing on the moon, conducting a science and exploration campaign, and distributing the data generated by Viper's instruments. Partners are prohibited from disassembling the rover or using its components separately from the Viper mission. NASA's selection process will prioritize proposals that facilitate the open sharing of data from the mission's scientific instruments with anyone interested in using it. Nikki Fox, Associate Administrator in the Science Mission Directorate at NASA Headquarters in Washington said, Moving forward with a Viper partnership offers NASA a unique opportunity to engage with the private sector. Such a partnership provides the opportunity for NASA to collect Viper science that could tell us more about water on the moon while advancing commercial lunar landing capabilities and resource prospecting possibilities. So, Viper will return to the moon though not on Griffin 1. This position has been reserved for another rover. After NASA canceled the Viper mission, Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic began seeking alternative payloads for its Griffin 1 lander. In an interview, Astrobotic CEO John Thornton said, We cast a wide net when NASA told us that Viper was going to be canceled. We took a deep look at all of those potential payloads and filtered by who can be ready first who's got the tech that can get a payload together that quickly, and then who's got the interface that's most closely aligned with what Viper's interface was. Luckily, they found it. Astrolab's FLEX Lunar Innovation Platform FLIP rover will serve as the primary payload aboard Astrobotics Griffin-1 lander, which is set to land in the Nobile region near the moon's southern pole. 
This rover coincidentally is a perfect replacement for the Viper. FLIP is a robotic four-wheeled vehicle weighing approximately 450 kilograms on Earth, with the capacity to carry up to 30 kilograms of payload. Given the close resemblance in size and mass to Viper, minimal adjustments will be required for its adaptation. Thornton said, there were almost no changes to the lander for FLIP, and that's what made it great. Well, it turns out it was no accident at all. Jarrett Matthews, chief executive of Astrolab, said in an interview, we understood as well that it's beneficial to both parties to have as few changes on the lander as possible. So we really designed FLIP to interface seamlessly with the existing Griffin design. Both companies are actively preparing their vehicles for a launch slated for the end of this year. Thornton mentioned that Astrobotic is developing key components of the lander's propulsion system and has found effective solutions to the valve issue that hindered its first lunar lander, Peregrine, shortly after its January 2024 launch. Other spacecraft components and software are also progressing as planned. Along with its lunar exploration mission, FLIP will test critical systems like full-sized batteries, tires, avionics, sensors, and software that are integral to Astrolab's larger flex, flexible logistics and exploration, commercial vehicle. Jarrett Matthews, founder and CEO of Astrolab, said in the same statement, By joining Griffin Mission 1, we will gather key insights into how lunar rovers like FLIP and FLEX operate in real lunar conditions. The FLEX rover is a versatile and rugged vehicle designed to support lunar exploration. It can transport two astronauts in full space suits, house a robotic arm for advanced scientific research, assist with robotic cargo logistics, and endure the extreme temperatures of the lunar south pole. FLEX rover offers the flexibility to be remotely controlled from Earth when astronauts are absent or operated directly by astronauts on the surface. As a key asset for future missions, the FLEX rover will play a crucial role when astronauts return to the Moon. Astrolab developed the FLEX rover in alignment with NASA's Lunar Terrain Vehicle LTV specifications, with plans to deploy a fleet of FLEX vehicles across the Moon's surface as part of the Artemis program. We've designed a logistics system capable of transporting a diverse range of cargo, aiming to establish a permanent lunar outpost more efficiently and at a lower cost than initially planned," said Astrolab founder and CEO Jarrett Matthews. The engineering team behind Flex also envisions the rover playing a pivotal role in future Mars missions, extending its capabilities beyond the Moon. On mission day, Flex will launch on a SpaceX Starship atop a super-heavy booster. Of course, we cannot fail to mention Intuitive Machine's second awarded flight. IM-2. This lunar mission is set for late February 2025, led by Intuitive Machines under NASA's CLPS program, with a Nova Sea lunar lander named Athena. The mission's goal is to explore the presence and quantity of lunar water ice using the Prime 1 payload, which includes a drill and mass spectrometer. In addition, the lander will deploy a Micronova hopper, a drone equipped with a neutron spectrometer to explore the permanently shadowed region, PSR, of the nearby Marston Crater. If successful, this mission will provide the first measurement of hydrogen in the PSR, offering critical insight into the presence of water on the Moon's surface. This will also be the first on-site, or in-situ, resource utilization demonstration on the Moon, utilizing a drill and mass spectrometer to measure the volatile content of subsurface materials. The Moon has captivated our imagination since the 60s, and it continues to be a destination that sparks our curiosity today. That's why we send landers and rovers to its surface. They lay the foundation for our future exploration and the eventual establishment of bases. With NASA leading the charge and SpaceX as a powerful partner, let's keep making our mark on this planet. The Moon is within our reach,